Beyond Earth, the journey to Mars. Imagine life existing somewhere other than Earth. Visionary Elon Musk once said, journey into the cosmos with curious ambition, for when humanity sets its sights on the next phase of life, Mars, it will be a journey beyond conception. The window of possibility is open for us to extend life to another planet. Um, to the best of our knowledge, life uh, exists only on Earth. I mean, I, you know, there's a good argument that it exists elsewhere, but we've seen no sign of it. I think it's important for us to take advantage of that window while it is open and to, to establish life on another planet in the solar system. The idea of traveling to another planet and making it our home is a dream that can only be realized through diligent research on Mars by those who are determined to uncover the mysteries of the universe. The question of why colonizing Mars is such a significant deal has been asked by many. With problems like poverty, hunger, climate change, and conflict on Earth, it seems reasonable to wonder if expanding to other planets is a wise choice. Uh, just in case something goes wrong with, with Earth, be, that could be either a natural or man-made uh, disaster uh, that knocks the technology level below that which is where it is possible to, to travel to another planet. However, there are a lot of reasons why colonizing Mars would not only make sense but also be extremely beneficial to earthly society. For example, just like backing up our data in case of a computer crash, having a self-sustaining colony on Mars would serve as a backup plan for humanity in case of catastrophic events on Earth such as pandemics, climate change, or asteroid collisions. Colonizing Mars would enable us to conduct countless scientific experiments, potentially unlocking new knowledge about the beginning of life and sustaining life beyond Earth. Furthermore, colonizing Mars could open up access to new resources such as precious minerals or water supplies that are necessary for supporting life and encouraging more research. The discovery of perchlorate on Mars had several implications. Uh, immediate was the, the chemistry of Mars. It's uh, perchlorate itself is very stable, um, but the things that make perchlorate that go to perchlorate, like chloride to perchlorate, form very strong oxidants. And this, this might be lead us to suspect that maybe the surface of Mars is very oxidizing and sterilizing for life on the surface of Mars. On the other hand, perchlorate is an energy source for bacteria on Earth. Subsurface on Mars, it's possible that there could be an ecosystem that thrives using the perchlorate that's formed in the atmosphere and then lands on the surface. So in that way, it's important for life. Secondly, um, if we ever wanted to set up a colony there, uh, it'd be great. You have a ready source for oxygen, uh, fuel, uh, and then water. What else would you want? This could also spur innovations in space exploration, sustainability, and other fields benefiting life on Earth in the same way that the moon landing spurred scientific and technological innovation. Establishing a colony on Mars would be like setting out to discover new locations, broadening our perspectives, and presenting us with novel experiences, enabling us to develop as a species. By reducing the demand for Earth's limited space and scarce resources, colonizing Mars can help preserve Earth's resources and ecosystems much like how sharing snacks conserves food in a family. Therefore, while it's legitimate to ask why we should colonize Mars when there are pressing issues on Earth, its potential benefits make it a worthwhile endeavor for our species. NASA is training four individuals to live on Mars this summer as part of its human exploration expedition to the Red Planet. Imagine an opportunity to volunteer to be away from your family in an enclosed 1,700 square foot area for 378 days for more than a year with three other people in nine rooms, including one shared bathroom. A common area and a small area outside that isn't really outside was made to look like the surface of Mars. Well, 4,000 people applied for the four spots to effectively be human guinea pigs and these were the chosen ones. Kelly Haston, medical officer, Nathan Jones, flight engineer, Ross Brockwell, and science officer, Anka Solario. 
The four volunteers will be part of a year-long mission to prepare humans for the exploration of Mars. They will live in a habitat that simulates conditions on Mars, complete with a 1,200-square-foot sandbox filled with red sand to mimic the Martian landscape. Lack of gravity. This area is called the sandbox and is meant to mimic the Mars surface. NASA even went as far as to dye all of this sand. The sandbox will be used for Mars walks or simulated spacewalks during the analog missions. NASA has sent several missions to Mars, including satellites, a lander called InSight, and a rover mission that includes the rover Perseverance, the small robotic helicopter Ingenuity, and associated delivery systems. InSight is designed to give the Red Planet its first thorough examination, performing the first comprehensive examination of its crust, mantle, and core. InSight's state-of-the-art equipment was built to probe far below the surface in search of signs of the mechanisms that created the terrestrial planets. Research into the interior structure of Mars is addressing key questions about the early development of rocky exoplanets and the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars in our inner solar system more than 4 billion years ago. Like NASA's InSight lander. InSight touched down in November 2018, and its first results were finally released this week in two nature journals. The results reveal a seismically active world with magnetic and atmospheric phenomena, all begging for further investigation. InSight is also recording tectonic activity and meteorite strikes on Mars. The mission's goal is to monitor the planet's vital signs, including its temperature, pulse, and reflexes. The InSight mission was a component of NASA's Discovery Program, which funds intensely targeted research projects that pose important questions about the solar system. For humans to successfully colonize Mars, we must be able to live and thrive in the harsh conditions of the planet. This includes having access to clean air to breathe, food and water for sustenance, and developing strong propulsion systems to accelerate our journey to and from Mars. To cover the approximately 140 million miles to Mars, we need advancements in propulsion technology. So how do we get to Mars, which is 200 times further away than the moon? The answer is an ultra-fuel efficient technology called electric thrusters, or plasma rockets. By replacing the old rocket technology on the spacecraft with a modern plasma rocket, this spacecraft can get to the moon with one-tenth of this tank of fuel. Or seen another way, this tank of fuel can get you to Mars. So why haven't we gone to Mars yet? Well, this thruster must operate for many years for a Mars mission. Imagine what would happen if you left your car running for a few years. It would break, and so will your plasma thruster if you run it long enough. So what's the solution? Make sure it doesn't break. <laughs> Although the exact propulsion system is still unknown, we know it must be nuclear-enabled to shorten the journey. NASA is currently exploring several possibilities, including nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion, which differ significantly from each other in terms of thrust and efficiency. In addition to propulsion systems, we also need an inflated heat shield to assist astronauts during space travel. Live from the central coast of California, this is NASA's JPSS-2 ENS Lofted, which will demonstrate a new type of heat shield that inflates for atmospheric reentry. To carry people to Mars, larger spacecraft will be required, and new technologies are being developed to enable heavier spacecraft to enter the planet's atmosphere and land close to the areas that astronauts want to explore. The inflatable heat shield developed by NASA will reduce the amount of room required in a rocket for its huge surface area compared to a rigid one. However, the technology is still not suitable for the red planet, and a planned flight test of a prototype will demonstrate its ability to withstand extreme heat during entry into Earth's atmosphere. Finally, we may need advanced Martian spacecraft, including spacesuits that function as personalized spacecraft. NASA's latest spacesuit is modular and can be used anywhere in space, while the next generation of spacesuits, known as the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit, will be worn by the first woman and the next man to set foot on the moon. The XEMU spacesuits allow for more natural movement and crew safety, 
and future improvements may include life support equipment that can withstand the planet's high carbon dioxide atmosphere and outerwear that can keep humans warm in the winter and cool in the summer. The journey to colonize Mars is an incredible scientific endeavor that showcases the unwavering human spirit of exploration and ingenuity. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. We'd also love to know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video.